If you couldn't see the torques being generated by the arms and legs, where there was an obvious moving body part involved, then you stood no chance of ever seeing this fifth and final one. That being the torque produced by the muscles along the spine and torso, where its production is even more obscure. And since you stood no chance, we're going to have our male athlete take a seat like this to help me explain it to you. In this position, I'm going to first have him come up and perform a regular sit-up because I need him at the top of this movement to draw on him. So let's show him with his torso fully flexed up toward his knees like this. Now I can go ahead and place the face of the clock back over the top of him. And you will notice I have him positioned such that my vertical line seen here is lined up with his shoulders since those will be the best landmarks for us to look at as I demonstrate this last remaining torque. Now, during an oblique sit-up, our athlete has a choice of rotating his torso either to his left or to his right while flexing upward. And so I'm going to show him rotated to his left like this. And the reason I chose to show him rotated to his left instead of his right is because having him rotated this way puts his shoulders and arms in similar positions as that of our female athlete, with both of their right arms going forward and left arms going backward. Now, in order for this rotational movement to occur in our male athlete, muscles known as the spine or spinal rotators must contract. These include your abdominal obliques in front, as well as muscles very close to the spinal column in the back. And I'll get into more of the details about these in a later video. But for now, all we need to know is that these spinal rotators are found on both sides of the body. However, the way our athlete is rotated here to his left, this rotation is predominantly being generated by the spinal rotators on the opposite or right side of his body. And if we simply follow the path his shoulders have taken during this oblique sit-up, we can see very clearly then that they have traveled in the counterclockwise direction. And so this is how we know the direction of torque produced by the spinal rotators on the right side of his body has to be counterclockwise because they carry the shoulders along with them in the same direction, which I will now draw this torque with a single red arrow in a little tighter scene here to better depict where this rotational force is being generated from. And now I'm going to keep this little red counterclockwise arrow in place and return him back to where he was originally with his right arm still going forward and his left arm still going backward. And hopefully you can begin to appreciate the rotation in his torso caused by this less than obvious torque. And let's go to our female athlete and place the corresponding counterclockwise red arrow on her. And perhaps you can envision this one taking place a little better as well. And so this is the fifth and final torque your body must generate in order to help you run your best. All right, that's going to do it for this video. You can access the link to the next part in this series, as well as all 12 parts in the description below. Now, before I go, I want to say that if you liked my video, then please click the like button. Feel free to share it wherever you want and leave me a question or comment as I'll be sure to get to it as soon as possible. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and follow Athletic Quickness on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay up to date on all of our speed training tips, articles, and exercises. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.